Okay, so welcome back, uh, everybody. And uh, to those of you who have just joined since, uh, since 2 o'clock here, I want to welcome you all here to uh, the, the latest in the uh, Design World webinar series. Uh, we're here for the webinar entitled Air Filter Designs for Electronic uh, Enclosures from uh, Universal Air Filters. So we will get things going here. A couple of points prior to uh, starting the, the webinar here, so some house, uh, housekeeping uh, points. Um, the webinar will be at uh, will be online at designworldonline.com after the the end of the webinar, and also it will be sent via email to everybody who is registered for this this webinar today. Uh, keep in mind that at the end of the presentation there will be time for Q and A. So uh, if at any time during the actual live webinar uh, presentation you think of some questions that you'd like to ask or a question, feel free to uh, go into the questions field there and uh, just type your question in and we will do our best to, uh, to get to as many of the questions as we can. Uh, and also, uh, for those of you on Twitter, you can, um, hashtag, or you can uh, tweet about this webinar in, in real time here. The hashtag for this webinar is there on the screen, hashtag DWWebinar. So uh, a couple of more, uh, a couple of other points here. Uh, I'm the moderator. That's me there, Miles Budimer. I'm a, the, um, the editor covering motion control and electronics and test and measurement for uh, Design World magazine. And uh, our uh, presenter today is uh, Dan Krupp from Universal Air Filter. And let me tell you uh, a little bit about Dan. Uh, so Dan is a longtime electronics uh, equipment protection specialist. He's a well-versed engineer by training. And uh, Dan currently manages a team of technical uh, account managers developing and supporting new business. Uh, this includes helping to design or helping design engineers satisfy their most demanding filtration um, uh, requirements in their uh, applications and in their work. Dan has uh, pretty uh, extensive expertise and responsibility for uh, uh, a variety of tasks, which include uh, strategic planning, international technical sales, uh, design engineering, uh, research and development, as well as product management. So. Uh, He's responsible for quite a bit, brings quite a bit of uh, expertise and knowledge with him. So uh, happy to have him here today to uh, help us understand uh, a little bit more about uh, air filter designs. So uh, with that, I will hand it off to Dan. Dan, it's all yours. Thank you, Miles. And welcome to the Design World Enclosures Air Filter presentation. And thank you to all who have been uh, taking the time here today to participate. The plan is to keep the information flowing quickly and familiarize you with the fact that air filters are playing a key role in equipment protection throughout industries. It's not all about air filters. With EMI shielding and fire block vent panels also being deployed in electrical and electronics devices and systems. It's also not just about electronics. Air filters are everywhere in telco networks, metro transportation systems, industrial machinery, utility-scale renewable energy systems like solar farms and wind farms, medical devices, and military electronics. Relax, put your phone in airplane mode, and get ready for the filter guide to move you through these enclosure design materials at diplomatic speed. Just a quick rundown of the content to be presented today. We plan to expose you to the types of industrial devices that employ air filters and make you aware of how they help protect equipment in an effort to avoid machine and system downtime. The system design section will list applicable industry standards and thermal management airflow restriction considerations. We also have a step-by-step -step filter specification process for next generation design and retrofit applications including intricate innovations used to make the most of cooling air resources. We will introduce you to other innovations in addition to filtration that enhance equipment protection, and we'll do a quick 3D CAD walkthrough demonstrating how to design an air filter. Finally, we'll summarize the importance of flame safety in enclosure components and demonstrate innovative flame block products to greatly enhance the enclosure firebox.
what kinds of devices employ air filters for enhanced equipment protection? And where are the filters located in electronics enclosures? Overheating is the number one cause of electronics equipment failure. End user customers need to know where filters are located so they can clean or replace to keep air flowing. When filters are identified in equipment, only OEM approved filters with UL recognized materials should be used so as to not introduce flame safety issues. There are also electromagnetic interference issues, so end users need to be on the lookout for clogged honeycomb EMI vent panels as well. Even in the computer room, air conditioning systems and commercial building HVAC, keeping clean filters in the system, especially low resistance air filters, are the way to go to reduce energy costs. Finally, OEMs need to be sure filters are certified Rojas compliant. It does happen where poisonous flame retardants and metals can sneak their way into counterfeit knockoffs and inhibit your company's goal to be environmentally friendly. Getting into more specific equipment types that use filters as part of enclosures, uh, in this case in production automation equipment for instance, drives, Compressors, and factory automation advancement, OEMs are popular specifiers of filtration products. In medical e equipment applications also, such as imaging, benchtop analytical, automated processes like blood screening, and min minimally invasive surgical robotics. Growing indoor-outdoor signage applications include jumbotrons, interactive kiosks, and other outdoor advertising platforms. Power Gen app examples are green fuel cell power utility vehicles, grid voltage stabilizers, and telecom backup power. The solar power systems build out is back on and the upswing is in place with filters being used in equipment such as photovoltaic inverters and other solar infrastructure. Wind turbines are typically deployed in extreme outdoor conditions. Power base and nacelle electronics transformers and controls equipment located in turbine base interiors are in great need of environmental protection. Military environments are equally extreme with shipboard, airborne, test equipment and vehicular mounted communication systems all needing filtration for equipment protection. In data centers, on the crack or computer room air conditioner side, in addition to depleted high efficiency filters that lay horizontal on top at the intake, we at UAF are seeing growing application of washable pre-filters that keep the larger dust and other rocks off and uh, bugs off of the expensive high efficiency filters and it cuts down on the numbers of times that you need to change these things out. Changing crack filters in large data centers is a big deal and operators can spend re days removing and replacing. With low resistance pre-filters, you can pay more up front, but these are cleanable. So you can clean the filter several times in a three to four month interval and save on high efficiency filter change outs. It's true, cleaning filters takes time, but there's no need for inventorying in this scenario and high efficiency filters as was the case 
before pre-filters. Rack systems are designed to allow many different network devices from different vendors to be co-located in controlled environments. These rack cabinets move lots of air and dirty air filters inhibit airflow so it's important to spec the right filter and be diligent with maintenance. UPS systems that provide backup power for buildings, data center, and telco networks are more commonly operating in standby mode, so the fans only kick on when the grid goes down and backup power is needed. Some of these models exercise weekly, which creates dust generation. Backup systems are there for a reason, so they do operate from time to time when grid power fails, and, and filters do get dirty, so they need to be checked and also included in maintenance procedures. Filters are specified in original equipment all the way down to one rack unit, two rack unit servers and storage devices, particularly when telco NEBS compliance is required. Even at the subcomponent level, you'll see filters in fan trays and fan packs that are used in various combinations to accommodate and support customer equipment enclosures. Here the filters also play a role in thermal management by distributing airflow downstream of the fans to assist equipment cooling. Dirt, dust, moisture, corrosive salt air, and electromagnetic interference disrupt equipment performance and ultimately lead to systems failure. Filters help protect equipment and they catch dirt and dust. Harsh environments are tough on electronics and electrical components. Take a look at the photo right here showing a new clean green colored air filter flanked by filthy used filters that are in need of cleaning and replacement. Here's an intake vent on a cabinet that illustrates the types of contaminants that can enter into an enclosure as technicians enter and leave the room and track in airborne contaminants. The technician in this photo is removing the intake bezel to reveal the air filter shown on the previous slide. And here's a view of the intake fan with the louver and the filter removed on the outside or intake side. This power cabinet example shows the exhaust side of the cooling fan which is pictured at the right side. And on the left side, the super clean inside of the electrical cabinet as a result of using a properly specified air filter to keep equipment running at optimum efficiency. Washing filters is easy and most times you can clean without the need for water. Just use a vacuum as shown or blow out with compressed air to clean and reuse. This saves on purchasing, logistics and storage as the filter should last at least a few years if the environments the equipment is deployed in is not overly corrosive. Now we can discuss next generation equipment OEM design considerations. Electronics and electrical enclosures and forced air cooling applications pretty much all share the same basic characteristics. What is the size? What level of components are stuffed into it? What types of fans are needed? and where's the best place to locate the fans. Industrial design is the overall look and feel of the product including the use of appropriate colors and attractive shapes and contours. Air filters are an essential part of forced air systems and it's best to consider them early in the design process.
It's important to be aware that customers require compliance with telco and data center industry specific standards such as NEBS and ATCA, as well as general enclosure ratings like UL60950. Compliance with these standards indicates adherence to the gold standard when it comes to equipment reliability and safety, as well as interoperability. UL94 and UL900 are component plastics and air filter specific flame ratings, and they are sub requirements and referenced within the NEBS and ATCA standards shown at left here on the slide. Moving from physical enclosure design, there are also thermal management design considerations used to dissipate harmful heat buildup in densely populated chassis. Thermal analysis software packages are used to simulate equipment thermal characteristics and calculate the effects of less restrictive and more restrictive air filter media on overall system pressure drop. Note that all physical components contained in a chassis impede airflow effectiveness to varying degrees. Air filters are no exception, but can be custom configured to match the airflow requirements of the specific application and deliver the most effective dust capturing at the lowest pressure drop. Forced air system designs use three popular cooling configurations. Fans on the intake side pushing cooling air through heat sources and pressurizing the cabinet. As shown on the diagram at right, fans on the exhaust end pull cooling air through and evacuate the hot air. More demanding thermal management challenges require fans on both ends to get the job done. Pros and cons of Pressurized enclosures with fans pushing cooling air in. The upside is all moving air is fully dust free and the filter is utilized to distribute the airflow in a laminar pattern. The downside is you need to add room generally to accommodate a space between the fans and the filter and to take full advantage of the complete filter surface area. Pros and cons of evacuated enclosures with fans pulling cooling air through the chassis from the exhaust side. Upside is cooling air is maximized using this method as it pulls air from all enclosure crevices, not just through the filtered intake opening. There's also no need to add extra room to create space between fans and filters as the chassis already serves as a spacer. The downside here is not all cooling air is filtered, making the electronics more vulnerable to airborne particulates. And you also do not get to take full advantage of the air diffusion qualities delivered by the filter media. Fans on both intake and exhaust ends maximize cooling air and allows for more dust holding capacity. Unfortunately, you need to make room for more fans. You'll use more power and more fans usually means more noise. Okay, now the video portion of the presentation. We're going to provide a 3D CAD demo on how to design a custom air filter on UAF.com followed by a review of some useful products for enclosures. Here's a quick demonstration of how to design an air filter using the UAF online 3D CAD tool. I'm trying to activate this video. There we go.
from the Universal Air Filter homepage, select the Use 3D CAD icon. Log into your account, and if you do not currently have an account, you can create one. Logging in provides the ability to download files and save for future reference. The model creation page provides several air filter model choices, and today we will create a quadrifoam air filter model FF5, which is 7 16 or 0.43 inches thick, by clicking on the create and download link at the right hand side. Now enter the custom attributes such as length up to 75 inches, and for this demo, we use 15.51 inches. and a width of 11.63. Choose black media with metal finish gold chemical conversion coating and Unigrid support on both sides. After the filter attributes are selected, click Generate Preview. This usually takes around 15 to 20 seconds to generate the preview depending on your browser. Notice at the top of the 3D preview, the part code has been changing to reflect the custom attributes selected, which is useful for tracking final design configurations. In the preview window, click your left mouse button to rotate and turning the mouse wheel allows zooming in and out. Click on CAD download to select from many native CAD platform choices and today we'll select step file in this example as this is quite generic to all CAD formats. Click on the generate CAD and again expect 15 to 20 seconds to create a zip file and then click on the zip file link where the file is automatically saved to your downloads folder. That's how easy it is to design a custom filter for your enclosure application. The recommendation here is do not design your enclosure around a standard off-the-shelf air filter or EMI vent panel. Rather, design a custom filter to best utilize your existing enclosure design attributes and make the most of all cooling air resources. Before the enclosure products discussion here are a few reminders of what to consider when starting the air filter spec process in electronics equipment. There's things like NEB certified, which telecom customers such as Verizon and AT&T will require for equipment to be deployed into their public switch telephone networks. There's UL and CE flame retardancy requirements, which are typical in electronics applications. Um, many electronics devices are, in the end are listed to UL60950, which is equivalent to European standard EN60950. Uh, you should also consider the need for EMI shielding qualities in your enclosure and your air filter opening. Also, metal finishes for industrial design or for corrosion protection and enhanced EMI. Uh, finally, you'd want to be partnering with an air filter manufacturer that can provide custom prototypes for your R&D testing and your new product development. Moving on to products, all metal filters are great for equipment deployed in harsh environments where washable filters are required due to challenging or prohibitive logistics conditions. Shrinking footprints of electronics also call for more innovative framing materials like the flex frame, which is flexible to conform to curved intake bezels for increased surface area and lower pressure drop. Flex frames also allow filters to snake around internal cabinet obstructions where a rigid metal frame is no longer acceptable. And flame retardant plastic frames are non-conductive to prevent shorts in high voltage applications. Specialty flame retardant foam media 
like quadrifoam, is ideal for electronics cooling applications. The open cell foam structure is available in varying densities or porosities, which is measured in pores per inch or PPI. Besides density and airflow restriction configuring, the thickness of the foam can also be manipulated at the same time to match the specific airflow requirements of the custom application. High efficiency filters are generally more expensive and not recommended for cleaning and reusing. However, sometimes equipment gets deployed in uniquely contaminated environments and it's good to know that the option is available to improve equipment protection or indoor air quality. If you need fresh air cooling to provide higher levels of thermal management in outdoor cabinets, you can move to membrane outside plant filters to keep out not only dust, but wind-driven rain and salt air as well. Filters designed for outside plant undergo rigorous hurricane-like conditions tests to demonstrate they can survive disasters. You also want to make sure filters are certified to keep salt fog out, which is highly corrosive to sophisticated electronics. Here's your step-by-step -step air filter design checklist. Early in the design process, determine what standards and specifications your equipment will be required to meet. Understand your flame safety ratings such as UL94 compliance. Select your air filter size and the appropriate framed model or housing. Determine if you need handles or tabs to help with ingress and egress of your filter into the system. Uh, as we talked earlier with quadrifoam, configure the filter porosity and thickness to match your airflow requirements. Understand what the maximum resistance your filter will be able to contribute to your system. Pick the color of the media and any special metal finishes to match your industrial design or dust showing uh, preferences and then prepare a specification drawing using 3D CAD or the online tools that we've demonstrated today. And then you're ready to request custom samples for your test and evaluation in your equipment laboratory. Our final section today, some useful info on the importance of flame retardant components for specification and sophisticated electronics packages. Use only flame retardant plastics in your chassis, meeting the highest UL flame safety ratings available. As you can see, the polymers used in these chassis are self-extinguishing and do not promote flame spread. These circuit cards are NEBS compliant and UL recognized and do not propagate fire. As you can see, they ignite but then self-extinguish. Likewise, air filters also need to be UL94 compliant to contain fire spread and keep systems reliable when subjected to catastrophic conditions. Besides UL flame safety compliance, we also advise to make sure your vendors are avoiding use of restricted substances in electrical electronics hardware. Dangerous old school chemicals like mercury, cadmium, and hexavalent chromium are strictly forbidden by electronics industry watchdogs. So be sure your components are ROSE compliant. By its nature, electronics equipment com commonly consists of high voltages and generates electromagnetic interference. You should know that openings and cabinets needed for fresh air intake can be configured with air filters that include EMI shielding. Integrated assemblies promote SKU and vendor consolidation and also save space. EMI vent panels for exhaust openings with no need for dust filtration are also popular in cooling systems that run 24-7. Finally, there's honeycomb fire block vent panels that are available to allow air to flow freely in vent openings under normal operating conditions. In the event of a catastrophic equipment fire, 
flame activated panels transform into fire blocks to prevent damage from spreading to other devices in the vicinity. Check out this fire block vent panel video and learn more about more ro robust equipment protection options. Made from an aluminum honeycomb core with a heat responsive intumescent flame coating, fire block vent panels are designed to provide fire containment within electronics enclosures. Upon the introduction of a flame, the intumescent coating expands preventing flames from passing through the honeycomb openings and reducing flame fueling airflow through the system. The coating expansion is generated using a flame activated chemical reaction and will not creep or expand with less significant elevated temperatures in an enclosure. The, the intermescent coating withstands even the highest temperatures as shown by eliminating flame passage from a welding torch. By preventing flame spread, fire block vents reduce damage and downtime caused by fire outbreak. This material can, can be used to meet industry safety standards, including the Telcordian Nevs GR63 flame spread test. Our final review slide here reminds everyone to consider air filters early in the design process. Understand your industry and customer requirements and understand and analyze the custom enclosure configuration for total system thermal and design management. And don't forget your filter can also incorporate the latest technological advantage including EMI shielding and always make sure to ensure your customers can acquire the replacement filters they need. This concludes our practical and high quality equipment protection discussion of air filters, EMI shielding, and thermal management in electronics enclosures. Thanks again for your participation today, and we'll turn it back over to Miles for a brief Q&A session and final remarks. All right. Well, thank you very much, Dan. Uh, thanks for that, uh, for that very interesting uh, presentation. and. Um, just wanted to uh, um, reiterate here that uh, this is uh, time for some Q&A here, so uh, we will uh, uh, we will do our best to uh, get to as many questions as we can here in what time we have left. Um, and uh, as you can see on the slide there, uh, that should be my name uh, there, Miles Budimir. But uh, more importantly is Dan's name, and Dan's name is there, and it's correct, and uh, the company is there, Universal Air Filter, and also Dan's email and uh, telephone number there uh, as well. So if, you're, uh, if you want to follow up uh, with him one-on-one -on -one at all with, uh, on anything that he's, that he's talked about here or something that uh, uh, maybe that he didn't mention, uh, then feel free to, uh, to clearly do that. Uh, so we will begin with some questions here. And... Uh, so um, first of all, I just prior to getting into the questions, I just want to say that uh, I think one of the most interesting things about this presentation was certainly those photos of the of the filters that are that were just completely clogged and kind of blackened and filthy, and uh, it's it, it's it it really kind of hits home when you see something like that how critical um, it is to have clean air filters, right? Uh, because so much of that, you know, you think of something like that being able to to impact or shut down some some larger system, right? So uh, I think that's a that's a great way to illustrate how how critical um, air filters really are. Um, so uh, anyway, I just I just wanted to mention that because I just kind of saw those images and said, wow. <laughs> but um, so here's um, here's a question about um, um, UL classified filters. Um, in terms of standards, I think probably most people are most familiar with UL standards. Um, and uh, the question is, is it um, sufficient to meet most uh, electronics uh, industry uh, uh, equipment standards if you just kind of stick with, uh, with the UL classified filters, or is it, uh, is, it, is it not? Is something more needed? 
Miles, the answer to that question is no. Uh, UL classification of air filters is a technology that spawns from building materials. So uh, typically you'll see uh, Home Depot or Lowe's type air filters uh, classified as UL to meet general building construction standards that have uh, been around for years. Uh, today we're talking about electronics and electrical enclosures which have much more stringent requirements that are uh, monitored and uh, you know if imposed by UL and uh, specifically we're talking about component plastics such as those that are used uh, for filter media and for uh, plastic frames and other accessories that are um, in the electronics uh, UL standards required to meet the highest flame ratings from UL or UL 94. So mm -hmm. UL 94 is the highest flame rating available from UL on a component plastic. For rigid plastics like framing materials, there's the UL V0 which is uh, referenced in the standards uh, that we discussed during the presentation such as NEBS, ATCA, and UL 60950. And then for uh, flexible plastics such as uh, filter foam material or other filter media which is not rigid, the highest rating available is UL 94HF1 and this standard again is referenced in those electronics industry standards that we discussed during the presentation. So very important to pay attention and comply with UL component plastics requirements. Okay. Um, as a good follow-up to that one, uh, we have a question here uh, asking about the UL 60950, uh, which is maybe just um, uh, a bit more of a general question about what is meant by that standard or what is the, what is the uh, I guess, what is the purpose or what are the key points of that standard? Do you know, uh, can you say much about that? Yes. Um, 60950? Yes, UL 60950 is a general electronics equipment standard, um, you know, monitored and uh, updated by uh, UL, of course. Uh, this is very popular for the many industry applications uh, that are more general uh, that we discussed uh, during the beginning of the presentation when we showed the various medical devices, uh, computer networking equipment, industrial machinery. Um, electronics assembly OEMs will typically migrate towards UL and EN 60950 to list their products. So mm -hmm. that's so th I, I don't know the exact title of 60950, but I believe it's electronics uh, business slash uh, computing industrial equipment. And uh, specific requirements for air filtration that you'll see referenced in 60950 are what we just discussed on the previous question which is UL94 flame recognition for component plastics, UL94V0 for rigid plastics, UL94HF1 for flexible foams and polymers. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, so here's another question then about uh, um, I guess about maintenance or um, um, which is how often do do air filters for electronic um, uh, enclosures and other equipment? Uh, how often do those need to be um, replaced or, or kind of swapped out, or is it just is it just kind of a more of a question of uh, the application, I guess, or is there kind of like a general uh, rule of thumb for that, or how, how do we uh, how do we figure figure that out? Uh, Miles, you got me started uh, very well with your assumption that uh, it depends on the application, it depends on the environment, the equipment, etc. So, uh, quick answer is yes, it depends. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of electronics equipment goes into clean offices and data centers and hospitals and clinics, etc. There's also a lot of electronics equipment that goes out. Uh, into very, very harsh environments when you consider military electronics and solar and wind farm equipment, you're talking about, you know, very extreme conditions. So, uh, of course, 
the maintenance cycles are going to vary uh, depending on you know where the equipment goes and and also the internal characteristics of the equipment how vulnerable is it to contamination and what types of thermal management systems are employed uh, with that said uh, you also suggested that there might be a rule of thumb and the answer is yes uh, generally speaking in all these different industries from medical to telecom to industrial to power gen um, you know at Universal Air Filter we're serving hundreds of new applications each year and the most popular time frame as a rule of thumb is clean inspect or replace air filters once every three to six months so we're seeing a lot of twice per year cleaning and replacement. Uh, you get into harsher environments, um, you know, you're going to generally move more towards every quarter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, on that question, then too, what about uh, uh, someone had asked about, um, um, let's say, um, uh, ocean type environments where you might get a lot of salt. Uh, you know those kinds of things, salt spray from the from the from the water. Any um, any special uh, you know special things that you need to uh, factor in there as well, or or is that just one of those other factors that you have to know? You know you should know what your what your uh, application is and maybe where it's going to be used, and then you kind of based on that, then you kind of select or. Yeah, we touched on the outside plant uh, filters during the uh, products uh, portion of the presentation, and you know I will provide a, a little bit of background uh, to let everyone understand you know where this technology has been uh, produced from and what spawned it. Um, the applications that first come to mind are telecommunications equipment that is deployed at the street level, uh, such as uh, AT&T, U-verse, or Verizon FiOS, fiber to the, the curb, you'll see clusters of cabinets located at the end of your neighborhood that deliver broadband video, uh, voice over IP, etc. Uh, and also at the foot of cell towers, which are located in uh, all types of varying uh, environmental conditions, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're also seeing uh, more recently is um, solar energy infrastructure and wind power uh, generation uh, wind turbines uh, particularly on the wind turbine side where wind farms are actually being deployed at sea they're putting them offshore to you know take advantage of real estate which um, you know which is first of all very windy and uh, also doesn't you know get in the way of uh, you know other uses of land real estate and uh, in the past, uh, getting back to telecom street cabinets, these systems were in need of thermal management, but uh, not so much that they couldn't be taken care of electronics cooling-wise with closed air-to-air -air heat exchangers, uh, which did not require the uh, necessity for uh, fresh air intake. So in other words, a closed system just circulates air around the cabinet where the electronics is enclosed and uh, you know dissipates the heat that way without having to bring in fresh air. Um, because of the technological advancements over the last five to ten years which include uh, cell phones which uh, share video, uh, high definition uh, photographs, etc. Everybody has a cell phone and uh, the explosion of uh, YouTube video over mobile devices uh, has um, you know, proliferated over the last uh, few years. Now these cabinets are packed with such powerful electronics that they no longer can be satisfied thermally with closed air-to-air -air heat exchangers and uh, the equipment designers are in need of bringing in fresh air. Uh, so the examples now are a cell tower located on a seashore that gets exposed to salt air. The, the wind turbine that is deployed offshore, um, military equipment that is uh, deployed shipboard, etc., where there's a lot of salt air vulnerability, which is very, very corrosive to sophisticated electronics. And you know the reason you're bringing the fresh air in is to you know protect the electronics and cool it, not bringing corrosive. Um, 
you know, materials such as sodium. So that's why the outside plant membrane filter was uh, developed and it is um, becoming more and more popular and we're seeing an explosion of the uh, you know, specification of use of membrane outside plant filters. Uh, the analogy would be uh, Gore-Tex material in your, your Gore-Tex clothing that allows your, your body to breathe without you know, letting the snow or, or the moisture in. And uh, membrane filters work uh, very similarly. Um, uh, as we mentioned in the presentation, uh, the, the testing that uh, third parties conduct on these types of filters is rigorous. They simulate hurricane-like conditions for wind-driven rain and salt air increase. So uh, you want to make sure if you're, if you're bringing fresh air into an outdoor cabinet under harsh conditions that you are specifying filters that have undergone this rigorous third party testing. Okay. All right, sounds good. Um, <clears throat> so here's another, um, maybe a similar type of question, but um, maybe from your, uh, from your um, point of view, is, um, is it popular or possible even, or uh, are you seeing uh, or hearing questions from from customers uh, about um, uh, retrofitting uh, existing uh, uh, equipment that's already deployed in these kind of um, uh, harsh environments with uh, with air filters at all? Are you seeing some of that at all, or uh, that's a good question and. Um Really, harsh environments are, are not really the, the driver of uh, air filter retrofits as much as you would think. Of, of course, uh, you know, there is retrofitting that goes on in you know, outdoor and you know, harsh industrial environments, but even in relatively clean environments such as data centers, uh, computer rooms, uh, telco central offices, medical clinics, uh, hospitals, etc., We've seen uh, many applications where uh, filters were not employed in the original design and the uh, devices are operational and in use for several months or, or years and they uh, run into uh, very challenging uh, contamination problems that uh, result in equipment failure. Mm -hmm. um, in the air filter business, we like to say we're like the dentist because nobody really wants to engage with us and use us because filters get dirty, they're a maintenance item, and if I can avoid using an air filter, I'm going to do so at all costs. And these are the types of motivations that uh, these electronics customers that I'm referring to had when they designed the original equipment. Uh, the other thing about uh, you know forced air cooling is fans come along with the filters and fans are equally, I guess, undesirable as a maintenance item because fans fail, they need to be replaced just like air filters. Uh, that said, uh, it does happen and um, you know it's always good at, in the original design, even if you don't want a filter, to offer a filter option and provide a provision for an air filter to be uh, included if your, if your customer uh, you know is wanting that or you know if you know particular segments of your customer base are harsh environments, you have the ability to add the filter later. Um, if none of the provisions are provided and the electronics is deployed and you know, incurs uh, failures because there's no filtration, then it's important for an air filter uh, partner uh, or manufacturer who's got the capability to um, fabricate metal in a, a precision with precision capabilities. In other words, uh, you don't just need an air filter in this case, you need an air filter bracket that mates up to your equipment easily so you can uh, provide retrofit kits that not only bring the air filter to the field but also a simple uh, attaching mechanism that uh, allows the filter to be installed on the equipment after it's already out there in the field. All right, uh, moving on, uh, kind of a two-part, I think, question here somewhat. Um, I know you had mentioned some of the other standards we talked about, such as uh, NEBS and, and uh, UL. Um, are air filters also rated to uh, NEMA specs and uh, uh, IP specs? 
as well. And also, I guess that kind of um, ties in with um, with the question here uh, that someone was asking about uh, washable filters and what standards are there for those, or how would you go about uh, selecting the right washable filter through through one of these standards? Or is that you know is that possible or is that doable? I guess. Okay. Yeah, I understand, and yeah, I agree with you. I think it's a two-part question, so I'll address the, the NEBA, NEMA IP question first. Okay. Um, are there air filter ratings to uh, enclosure standards such as NEMA 3R, NEMA 4, NEMA 12, IP 54? The answer is no. These are enclosure standards. They're strictly enclosure standards, and there's no specification or standard that refers to NEMA air filters, for instance. It's, uh -huh. it's fully an enclosure design. It's up to the enclosure designer to make sure that all um, fire, uh, earthquake, vibration, uh, dust contamination, water ingress are uh, taken care of with the enclosure design. Now that being said, do filters play a role in the successful uh, completion of NEMA and IP compliance testing? Absolutely. And uh, that's where custom filter designs uh, come into play uh, in particular because uh, the filter can be configured to match the uh, thermal management and uh, EMI shielding slash um, uh, water and uh, particulate requirements that you know, are also being covered by other enclosure components such as louvers and plenums and labyrinths, etc. So, uh, the quick answer is there's no NEMA standards for air filters, but filters certainly play a key role in uh, enclosure OEMs meeting uh, NEMA standards compliance. Mm -hmm. uh, part two question, um, I forgot what it was. The Please give me a hint on. Uh, it was a, uh, it was a question about the um, uh, washable filters and about yeah. if there are any standards or kind of you know for those or how you sure. go about choosing the choosing the right one. Uh, generally speaking, the answer is no. Um, and I I did uh, provide a slide during the presentation regarding the advantages of uh, washable filters and you know there's a lot of selling points with. You know, giving your customer the option to, uh, you know, get that filter out of the system, uh, make it as good as new, you know, in a very short period of time, and get it back in the system without having to purchase and ship and inventory replacements and get them to you know, all corners of the earth. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, when you move into very stringent electronics. Um, public switch telephone, uh, internet infrastructure networks such as those run by the major uh, communications service providers and uh, cable TV uh, providers. The NEB standard uh, strictly forbids uh, washable filters you know, in their systems. They require uh, single use remove and replace filters and it has to do you know, with the potent, the risk of, you know, high levels of contamination of removing a dirty air filter, and having uh, the vulnerable electronics, which is which continues to run 24/7, uh, thermal uh, cooling systems included, uh, by you know pulling a dirty air filter out and, and keeping it near the vicinity and and cleaning it uh, nearby. Not that you know most technicians are going to do that, but the risk is there. They want you to get that dirty filter out of the vicinity as quick as possible, get a clean one in there immediately, and then uh, dispose of the filter. So most industries and applications will allow for a cleanable, environmentally friendly, washable air filter. Um, however, the big communications uh, providers do not. Okay. All right. Uh we're coming close to the end here, so I'm going to try to squeeze in, uh, well, hopefully, uh, at least two more questions. But uh, this one touches on something that you mentioned in, in answering this last question. Uh, and it's a question basically about um, the difference in cost, let's say, between a standard and a special filter. 
uh, is there anything like a like a uh, like a chart on the price difference uh, in those two kinds of filters? Um, and I guess uh, it sounds like the question is basically a standard, you know, versus you know, standard kind of uh, um, off the shelf type of filter versus some kind of uh, some kind of a special custom even filter. If that makes sense. Uh, yes, it um, you know gives me another chance to you know make the recommendation that you really don't want to design your enclosure around a standard off-the-shelf air filter or an EMI vent panel, but um, it's really more prudent to design a custom filter to best utilize your existing enclosure design attributes. So you've already got a Firebox and enclosure design your equipment protection from you know previous uh, generations of equipment. So you want to you know take advantage of those designs and not have to you know recut holes and uh, move fans around in you know an existing design. So by having a custom filter, it really allows you to take advantage of you know all of your cooling resources and uh, you know work around your uh, because uh, enclosures involve many more items and components than just air filters. Air filters right. are a very small part of, uh, you know, the bill of materials list and, and the overall system design. So, you know, that's the uh, the first take. And from from a cost standpoint, you know, I think that that really is a, is a good segue into cost. If if you're, you know, designing your chassis around a standard filter, you know, you you really need to consider the Additional engineering cost and and development and testing costs associated with you know redesigning a chassis that you, you already had designed. So you know that there, there's those costs that are, that are relatively uh, visible and you know the hidden costs of you know going to, to retest. So um, custom filters are are more expensive. There's no doubt uh, you know compared to you know a Home Depot filter. Custom filters are going to be, you know, three to four times as expensive. Uh, standard filters from, you know, industrial distributors, you know, you can say that a custom filter is going to be uh, two times to, to three times more expensive. But you've got the ability with a custom assembly to add more features. And, um, you know, we talked about SKU consolidation of uh, being able to incorporate into the filter assembly, and this is particularly important in today's world of shrinking electronics and more powerful electronics in smaller and smaller packages with a custom filter assembly you can include not just a dust filter but also an air diffuser and an EMI vent panel and a sheet metal component all in a single part number which allows for SKU consolidation, allows for vendor consolidation as well, which is a, a very uh, hot topic uh, these days in the world of uh, global supply chain and global procurement. Okay, good. All right, well, it looks like uh, looks like we are at the close of the webinar here. It's uh, 3 o'clock now, it looks like, Eastern time, so it looks like we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to uh, stop things here. So uh, once again, I just want to say uh, thanks to uh, thanks to Dan and to um, Universal Air Filter for your um, presentation today and for your expertise and for your time. Um, I know I learned um, quite a bit about uh, air filters, so uh, thank you very much for that, Dan. And uh, just a couple of final points here uh, prior to signing off. Uh, the webinar will be at, uh, up at designworldonline.com, and also everybody who registered for the webinar will get a copy of the presentation in their email. Uh, for those of you on Twitter, you can, ha you can tweet about the uh, webinar at the hashtag there, hashtag DWWebinar, if you're interested in doing that. Uh, you can connect with uh, Design World and all of those various social media ways, including Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and Google Plus uh, and um, uh, so YouTube and Pinterest. Uh, and also, uh, if you'd like to uh, keep this going and uh, talk some more about air filters, you can also do that on the engineeringexchange.com. Uh, and also, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you have Dan's contact info there as well, uh, his email address and the uh, 
the phone number as well. So if we did not get to any of your questions, which I think we, I, I tried to get to as many as I could, but I, I probably left off uh, a few. You can certainly follow up with Dan. And um, so um, that's it. I think we're all we're all set here. Thank you everybody for um, for. Uh, joining us here today, and I hope you have a good rest of the day and rest of the week as well. Thank you, Miles. Okay. Thanks a lot, Dan. Take care, everybody.